Trevor looked at the sweaty, crumpled paper in his hand, reviewing the instructions yet again. Soon, it would be too late to read over them, but until then, every rehearsal could be the one that saved his life. Four pale candles, he read, and then glanced over to the four candles sitting on the floor. He had arranged them in a perfect square, just as instructed. The line of Chris wiped chalk connected them, and he mentally marked the next item off the list. His hand was shaking, making it harder to read the scrawled lines of pencil on the paper. With a deep breath, he looked away from the paper and out the window. There was a swell of nervous energy bubbling in his chest. He had prepared. He had reminded himself. He had read and studied. He had memorized every line of text and done his research. Now was no time to have second thoughts or any doubts. Remember the entity will know your thoughts. If you enter with doubts, he will use this to your advantage. Trevor closed his eyes and smiled, trying his best to stay confident and think reassuring thoughts. What he needed to do, he realized, was to find something else to think about. Every review of the instructions only deepened his anxiety, and it obviously wasn't helping. It reminded him of cramming for final exams. He had always done it and worn himself out, so that he ultimately spent a week sick and dreading the impending tests. Now was not the time to weaken his mental or emotional defenses. It was, instead the time to finally achieve something with his life. Trevor walked away from his preparations, shoving the paper in his pocket and trying to prevent his mind from running over and over the instructions. They always hung on the final words. If you successfully complete the ritual, he will grant you one request for whatever your heart desires. Choose wisely. As if he could dislodge the thoughts, he shook his head sharply and turned his attention to his surroundings. He was sitting in front of an old chapel. The wooden pews cracked and listing in the shadows. What had once been lovely windows were now either caked with dust, webbed with cracks, or lying broken on the floor. The moon sprinkled silver light around the interior, light which somehow only made the shadows darker. He wondered briefly about those who had once gathered here, bowing penitently and singing their hymns. The churches dried up when a town did, and it was nothing more than an artifact cast out. Find a place of religious significance. It may be a church, temple, synagogue, mosque, or sanctuary, blessed space, or an area of miraculous happenings. Any place where people come to demonstrate their faith will suffice. Trevor smirked, remembering the words. He had considered going to his hometown's football stadium because that was where he had witnessed the greatest religious fervor. But somehow he thought such secular praises were not what the ritual intended. He had lucked upon this place on one of his trips to and from university. It was off the beaten path, well removed from the rest of civilization. Soybean fields were the nearest attraction, which meant he would be mostly free to conduct his activities in peace. Assuming, of course, local kids did not wander in, drawn by the same isolation and freedom that had brought him. Given the lack of beer bottles and vandalism, he assumed it was not a popular place for such activities. His legs were shaking up and down, whether from excitement or anxiety he was not sure. He checked his watch, noting that it had slipped five minutes closer since his last inspection. It was now 11.50, which meant his waiting was almost over. It must be begun precisely at midnight, too early or too late, and you will have no results but feeling like a fool. He had set and reset his watch just to be certain it was exact. Now he needed to rely on it. He had also selected this position because it was close enough to hear the church bells from a couple towns over. Come midnight, they would toll and assure him he was on time. 
The wind kicked up outside, tossing a few stray leaves through the opening. The many holes in the roof howled pitfully, and the rest of the building creaked with the gusts. It seemed almost as if the building was in its final days, waiting for nothing but a strong storm to destroy it once and for all. Giving in to his worries, Trevor pulled the paper from his pocket and reviewed the important parts again. He skimmed over the materials, certain he had everything he needed. Instead, he reviewed the cautions to ensure he did not make any deadly mistakes. First, never speak your name. Such a being will seek any way to gain power over you. Should this creature find any weakness, he will use it to possess you. This is akin to being split apart from the inside out, slowly and over several days. Most unfortunate souls are also forced to watch as they slaughter their family, friends, and other victims. It was simple enough, no names. That was an easy pitfall to avoid. Next, do not answer his questions. They are intended to trick you. You must only say what you have been instructed and your request. If you engage in any questions, he will trap you in his game. You will slowly waste away, caught forever in his web of lies. Trevor had always been a tactern, so he was not concerned. Remaining silent was his primary skill in life, and he looked forward to putting it to good use. He also could not help but wonder who in their right mind would try to best a demon in a duel of wits. It seemed like one of the oldest follies. Third, ensure all barriers are maintained for the duration of the ritual. He will be unable to touch or harm you physically while the barriers are active. Adhere to the guidelines for your own safety. Another easy warning to heed. Who would ignore the barriers? Why would they even be in the ritual if they were not vital to its safe and successful completion? Finally, believe nothing of what he says. He exists only to lie. Rereading the warnings made him feel safer. They were so obvious that he could not imagine anyone making such grievous errors. He certainly knew better. And if the duress warnings in the ritual were so clear to him, it seemed impossible that he might fail. The clock hand spun closer, and he moved back to his prepared space. There were four candles, a fifth and a black candle setting to the side. There was a silver bowl of blessed water, secured from his local cathedral some days before. Also, a lighter, a scrap of cotton cloth, and a steel knife. It was everything he needed. Trevor knelt beside the chalk square, arranging and rearranging the items for the most practical setup. He wanted everything in arm's reach, but also in the order it would be needed, which meant he thought the lighter, the bowl, the knife, the cloth, and finally, the candle. It was midnight, he saw. As soon as the thought crossed his mind, he heard the bells ringing, right on time. He brought the lighter to the first of the four candles, slowly moving clockwise and lighting each in turn. They flickered and snapped in the breeze, but remained strong. His hands were unsteady as he picked up the bowl and set it in front of him. With a deep breath, he gripped the knife in his hand and drew it smoothly across his palm, just like they did in movies only it seemed to hurt worse than the actors let on. Let a few drops fall into the water, and then bandage yourself carefully. The scent of blood can attract other things you may not wish to deal with during the ritual. Trevor followed the instructions to the letter, turning the water a cloudy red with his own blood before tightly wrapping his hand with the cloth. He knew the next steps by heart, moving through them almost robotically. Each step had been dutifully practiced, with the exception of cutting his own hand. Many times in the bright light of day, now 
He lifted the bowl carefully with both hands, watching the way it rippled and changed. His blood diffused through the water, leaving darker and lighter patches that were quickly settling into the same pale shade. I summon you here with this dedication. Arrive. With the last word, he tipped the water into the middle of the square. Unlike in the practice sessions, the water rolled and then stopped at the chalk outline, forming a tiny pool that defied the laws of gravity and surface tension. Trevor's mouth hung open briefly, but he knew he had to continue. The black candle was already in his hand, and he lit it despite the increasing wind. Gently, he placed it in the middle of the square, watching the tiny flame flick on the surface of the water. I give you light to seek me, he said, the words trembling from his lips. Arrive. Barely were the words out of his mouth, then the black candle began to sink below the surface of the water before disappearing completely. A dark shadowy face emerged on the surface of water, grinning widely. The face was hard to discern, but appeared dark and scaly, riddled with scars and fresh wounds that seemed to see blood into the water around him. There were so many, many teeth. Trevor felt a cold pit of fear settle solidly in his stomach. Who summons me? came the deep, gravelly voice. It came not from the thing's moving lips, but from the air all around Trevor. The whole building seemed to vibrate with the voice. No names, no questions, he reminded himself. Trevor's mouth was dry, thinking just how easy it would have been to make that mistake. You have been summoned, and I will instruct you. Speak your name. The church chuckled in time with the reflection in the water. He was smiling, showing even more teeth than Trevor thought could physically exist in the span of that face. Who are you to command me, mortal? Came the bone-aching words. They seemed to vibrate through Trevor's body as if he was being pulled apart by reverberations alone. Speak your name, he said again through gritted teeth. The demon stretched, his arms stabbing through the surface of the water and entering this world. The water trickled off them, stumbling over protruding scales and nodules. Cruel claws shone in the candlelight, covered with water in a viscous red liquid that Traver knew by sight. The smell of rot and decay followed quickly after, threatening to bring up Trevor's meager dinner. I have summoned you, and you will obey my commands. Remain within the summoning area. Oh, shall I obey you and remain here? Asked the beast mockingly, planting one hand on either side of the puddle, outside the thin chalk lines. A deep rolling chuckle emerged this time as he pulled himself slowly through the pool and into reality. The floorboards of the church appeared to buckle and steam wherever the claws pierced. He will try to intimidate you. Stay strong. Remain within the summoning area. Speak your name. Trevor tried to force all of his courage and confidence into his voice but it only made the demon laugh all the louder, now standing at its full height. The beast looked down on the pale boy before him. You can call me Trevor, came Trevor's voice from this monstrous visage. Trevor froze, his mouth agape and eyes wide. For an instance, the demon appeared almost sympathetic, but the facade cracked into a merciless anticipation as his shadows flickered over his face. You have meddled with something you do not understand. It said again, voice deep and roaring, but now mimicking the disappointed tone of the school teacher. I, I never told you my name. You can't know my name, Trevor stammered, his fear getting the better of him. His eyes flickered from the face to the arms to the rooted feet, not sure where to stay or linger. Everywhere he looked, there was an impossibility. 
You think I need you to tell me your name? Casually, the demon stretched, muscles and joints popping and cracking, as if it had been a millennia since he moved about. His eyes dark with unholy light, fixed on Trevor with a predatory amusement. He answered his own questions with a deep shake of his head, sending water sizzling across the sanctuary. Trevor began scooting backwards, whimpering with fear as the monster before him took one broad step forward. There was really nowhere to escape. The candles slowly snuffed themselves out, leaving only the moonlight to glint off those smiling teeth. But Trevor gasped as his hands scrambled along the floor for anything that might help. But I followed all the instructions. The creature paused to survey the assembled implements in the chalk square. Yes, you certainly did. The building trembled with the force of the laugh. From the cloying darkness, an arm shot forward. In the next breath, Trevor was off the ground. The demon slowly drew him close until their eyes were level. Who do you think wrote the ritual in the first place? He exists only to lie. <laughs>